Hello everyone, my name is Alex and Panic, and this is another reaction to Shokugiki no Suma. It is season 3, episode 20. And you know what to do, as always, if you want to see the reaction itself. Just go down to my descriptions, follow the links, replace the parentheses dot parts with real dots, and enjoy. Once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear my thoughts about this episode. So, see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Now, um... Well, that was a good episode. I mean, it was more or the split into two parts, although the first one was way smaller. So we started off with uh, this little shukigi, this little team battle. Um, and uh, it was... N I mean, it was very fitting. They had like a menu they should create, like a food they should create. And both teams went totally on to something different. So they completely changed it. Which makes sense when you see how far they've come. I mean, they are working with top chefs there, with the best of the best right now. Um, so they don't go for the normal one. Although we had, um, in the past, dishes where they made the one that was expected like perfectly or with a different flavor, stuff like that. Here, it even looked completely different. And... Um, they went with completely different ingredients and what was the main thing which I got it was about trust each other um, realize what all of you are capable of everyone has its um, specialities you know and if you want to win such a shokugeki as we will have as a team you have to bring your A game you have to bring the best you can do and if the best you can do is as example something fish like something seafood like and the dish you are to make is not about seafood at all then i guess it's we're going for still do seafood and hope and no don't hope know that the others from your team will do their best thing they can do and together you will create something that is fitting what you have to create and still is unique due to what all of you brought in. So that is a very interesting viewpoint. I like it. Um, and I mean, it makes sense. They they have their specialities, their best options. While Central, on the other hand, it will be very interesting what they will going will be going for. Will they do this one dish they are waiting for in a perfect form, in the one form? So... Um, because in my opinion, they would waste a lot of the potential of the Elite 10. They are good at what they do. So if they just make the perfect, I don't know, you know, like um, tomatoes and garlic or whatever they will ask for. Um, they Yes, they could do it like perfectly, but they will lose what makes them special. So maybe this is about where we are going. And what I ask myself is... Who is to judge that? I mean, we will see it, it's not yet. But who will judge that? Because everyone from the Elite 10, including director Zani, can't. Because they're biased. You know, they are on the one side. Those from the other side can't either. So we uh, cannot have uh, Senzian, uh, the old guy, you know, the old director. We cannot have um, any of those cooks. Sure, that you could bring in, like, the best cooks in the world. But even in their case, I would really question if they are biased as well. Because a lot of them work together with the Academy and thus know both sides possibly. So it's I think it will be very hard to find a judge here. We will see. Maybe they will do it as they did in this, that you have to taste the food of the other side and be honest. I think for the most of the Elite 10 they will be. I mean, um, they are not, they are posing each other right now, but there is kind of a strange respect for each other still, which is, um, what I'm hoping, which is what I like, you know, there, there's no, like, real enemy territory, expect, uh, except for Azani, who is clearly wanting to just push him out, but the Elite 10, those, that the turncoats, as it was said, the six, I think it is, um, most of them still respect the others so we will see um 
As I said, they had to judge each other's food and they all pointed at the others for winning. So they were impressed. They um, are fair in their judgment and they kind of see the, the flaws in their own food they created and see the benefits in the good things in the food of the others. Um, in, in the end, the uh, teachers kind of brought them to compliment each other, which was good. In many ways, it was a recap, you know. Um, I think they all know what they can do. So each of them kind of recapped from the past what they were able to. Except for Irina, um, who is um, still learning, who is still, as one said, on like the first steps now, it feels. So when it was about making the dish the dish that was asked for perfectly so in the end like central would do it she is like on the top she is the golden tongue but if you are just like let's experiment let's just throw it together what we have seen since episode one being the way that uh, yukihira and his father are working then she's on step one right now i can see that she is starting fresh um and I, I'm looking forward to where this will lead, because with her gift that she has, this will be an interesting journey. And possibly, I would kind of like it if uh, it would make the edge in the fight to come. Um, for Aldini, it was he was pointed out a little bit more. I mean, he sets himself up as being like the enemy in a friendly competition with Yukihira he he um really mess, messes himself up um against Yukihira and he realized that he needs to step up his game that he kind of reached an end at the ladder in what he is able to do um by defining himself in a specific way that he kind of defined himself as being the Italian cook the Italian chef as example so he destroyed his own foundation to start on it and get even better so um i mean that's a hard step to do and he succeeded and it was recognized i like it so um that's that uh let me see yeah okay um so the question is now about the number game uh, numbers game. So we have those in the picture here on the one side and on the other side we have um, Azani and six of the Elite Ten, the turncoats. Um, I mean, if we would go with just that, it would be seven on seven. Just from this picture, you know, it would be seven against seven. The question is, is it? And I am not sure whether or not Senseon, I'm hoping I pronounce the name correctly, um, the old director, you know, uh, second from the left here, if he is joining in on this team side, I'm not sure, because so far it did not seem like, um, but maybe he will, and then it will be interesting, because I don't think we have ever seen him cook, I can't remember that we have, so how good is he, but let's say even if he would join, um, on the other side we have the Elite 10, six of them, and Azani. And he already mentioned the fact that there was no number defined. So he could bring in as many people as he would like. Um, I see what he's thinking. He's thinking like I bring in like 100 additional people to cook for me. To prepare dishes, to whatever, you know, so that you have less to do. Um, so there are two sides to that. One is, especially if you bring in experienced ones, let's say he brings in really, really experienced chefs from around the world because he can do it. Um, that might give him an advantage. But then, uh, we have a saying in Germany here, and it is, um, I try to translate it, um, too many chefs are ruining your dish. So, it's not dish, it's... Uh, which is like I don't know what what little kids eat mainly you know so this porridged version of stuff smashed potatoes and stuff like that so too many chefs may be a problem and this is what I'm thinking if he has too many people in his team 
this may cause may cause problems because um, they might argue about how to create a dish, what spice to use, um, who is doing what. You know, you stumble above each other. While if you have less, who are completely confident with, with each other and know what each of them can do, as we learned in this episode, you can be great. That is the, uh, the thing about um, if you look, look in a professional kitchen, there is the sous chef, there is the main chef, and there is, um, I don't know exactly how many, like five, six people, who each of them has its very own definition of what, of what this person does and is good at. So, and thus they work together over a long time, they know what everyone is doing and how he is doing it or she is doing it, so you know what to expect. You know what, as example, the soup will taste like if this person does it, and then you will adapt with your own food so that it mixes up perfectly. So if you are a well-played group of like a handful of people like we have here, you can create something beautiful. If you are not working together properly, your problems with the food of each person will grow on each other even more. So you will have more problems as if you would work alone. And this is what I'm kind of expecting to see. Maybe, just maybe. So, that's a cool one. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then we had Irina um, Nakiri standing up to her father. I mean, in the end, we have seen that before already. More than once, that she stood up to her father. Um, and they are right now pushing her in the story more and more a little bit too much for me but it's okay i mean so it's this third season is as it seems mainly about her growing stepping out of the shadow of her father and becoming who she is meant to be while in general i thought should uh, this season uh, not the season this whole series should be about yukihira it is changing towards her more and more now I'm not sure about that. It's a bit strange, but it's okay. So, um, she stands up and she gives up seat number 10. So, <clears throat> he didn't see that coming. And um, I like the fact that all the other seats were surprised. I mean, those seats in the Elite 10 are important. They are a symbol and you really, really want to clinch to it to not give it up. But the fact that they just couldn't believe it that she gave it up tells you that they, well, kind of have sit too long on this seat. It should be about you cooking. It should be about you being a good chef, about your food. It shouldn't be about that you are elite 10. Because then, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, I have a Michelin star, so I'm a good chef. No, no, <clears throat> you have a Michelin star, so when you were tested, you were a good chef. Now prove it to me that you are still. And that's the thing. Maybe they are sitting too long on those seats and they have to prove themselves, which they will do now, we know. Um, and then we had the I am the queen, everyone bow down. Uh, that was a bit too much, but okay. And we have a friendly competition again between her and Yukihira, both wanting to be number one. And I'm pretty sure Aldini wants to be it as well. So, um, there will be more later, I guess. <clears throat> so, it's a cool episode. I look forward to the next one. Um, the opposition faced each other and uh, they... The opponents, that's it, faced each other and they um, will go north. And interesting will be who each of them will invite to be there on their side cooking and on their side watching. And I kind of expect to see like Monida every face we have seen so far in this series in the audience. And um, I guess it will be on television, something like that as well. It would make sense. It's like the major thing right now. Okay, that's it from me this time. I hope you liked, I did for sure. So until the next time, feel free to comment, like and subscribe. My name is Relax and Panic. Goodbye and out.